Hi, in this video, I'm going to show how I troubleshoot DWI data. Yesterday, I in the DSS Studio forum, I saw a message uh, from Yesaman Bokasade. Uh, she said, hi, Frank. I am very new to DTI analysis and also DSI Studio. I would, planning to analyze DTI in Macad. Is it possible to do auto tracking for Macad Brain? Um, this is quite interesting because I, right now DSS Studio has auto tracking for human, but it, it is not designed for monkey brain because the chartography atlas and templates are based on human brain. But I think, okay, maybe we could try feeding the data to the pipeline and see whether it works or not. Uh, so I replied, okay, it's possible. Uh, I asked her to send the fit file, check on it. Um, I'm skipping over this right here, but I finally got uh, kind of the SRC file to start with. Those are the... Uh, DWI signal aggregated in one file. So let's try. I will showcase how I troubleshoot the data and see if we could work out all the tracking in multiple. So first of all, let's open the SRC file. We can open it in step T2 reconstruction and set that the SRC file. Once the files is open. Um, you can see here the monk, the size of the monkey brain uh, compared to human brains is much smaller. And you will notice that the slide showing here is chrono slice. But by def default, uh, we would need this showing a SEO slice with anterior side on the top. And when this slider bar go to the left, you should go to the bottom of the brain and on the right to the top of the brain. So the first step we need to do is try to rotate this image bottom so that DSS Studio will get the right orientation. So to flip this chrono session into ACL sessions, we know that the chrono session is Y axis, whereas the ACL slides are is uh, oriented at the Z axis. So the first thing we should do is go to the edit and image flip uh, swap Y and Z. So Y is for chrono and Z is for SO. And let's see. So once you click on this, you will see, okay, now we get the SO section, but the anterior part of the brain is a on the bottom side and we need it to go up. And another thing here is once we flip or swap, it creates a mirror image. So whenever we have a swap, you always need to go with another flip or swap so that this mirror image will go back to the original um, image dimension. So here, okay, we, we also need to get the uh, anterior side on the top. So what we're gonna do is flip in Y. Okay, we, here we see, okay, now the anterior side go to the top and then we um, flip, flip it to make the mirror image back to the original image. But when we go to the left side, we see, okay, you see here, this is top of the monkey brain and this is the bottom. So we also need to fix another image dimension problem here. Kind of right now it's upside down, I would say. So the way we could do it is flip in the Z. So it's now upside down will be fixed. So once you click it, Okay, on the right, it's now the top of the brain and then go to the left, it will be the bottom of the brain. So it's now right in the right orientation. But as I mentioned, 
once we click a flip or swap, this is a mirror image. So to mirror it back, here we could just go flip X. So you see that you just flip X and then fix the mirror image. So to summarize, whenever we have a swap image dimension swap or image dimension flip, it always, to, you always need to go by pair. Otherwise you will create a mirror image that will create a um, problem downstream in the analysis. Also, you need to make sure that this window shows ASIO slides. And when you go to the right of this slider bar, you need to go to the upper uh, part of the brain, where it's good. When go to the left, then there's the bottom of brain. So right now, this is good in terms of the image dimension. And another step I always uh, did when I analyze data is click here to check raw DWI data. So this allows us to look at the raw data just in case if there is any problem, usually I would look at this DP table. So this P table is, is good. It's a standard DPI table, no B value, uh, 30 to 60 directions, so standard DTI, everything's good. And I will quickly go through each of the data right. So you see here, we have some, maybe it's any current problem. You see the brain is like a little bit up, like jumping upside down. This could be due to eddy current and or either motion. Um, so a better uh, way to improve this or correct this is, is, is to use FSL's eddy to fix that. Um, another problem you could notice is that there is, I think it's the here, you can see some distortion here due to phase distortion artifact. So this data is more like an unprocessed data, but uh, if I use HCP data definition, um, a way to correct this is to use FSL's eddy or top up, and, and this will help improve the quality. So if this data set has AP or PA, then likely we could fix this kind of distortion problem. Um, but right now we, we could just give it a try. Um, this distortion may not be quite a problem yet, uh, even though it's kind of shifting, I've seen like three or four voxels, but still usable. Uh, and the eddy or current, this kind of brand movement will, is about one or one voxel distance. It should be still okay. It's not that serious. So we'll still go ahead, but just in case to uh, to note here, if we do get a perfect data set, this still need to be processed by FSL. And FSL ID top up will output nifty file. Then we can load it back into DSS Studio um, to continue the analysis. So in terms of its data quality, it's, it's decent. I would say it's like uh, nice, nice data set. So we have, we fix image dimension problem. We check the raw signal. Now let's confirm the mask. Um, DSS Studio will load a default mask. So you should see on the right, there's a red mask. It's not, Perfect. So I'll kind of fix it here. Click on edit. I will threshold it again. So once I apply a new threshold, you can see here, okay, we some we have some fragment. Let's see if we can fix it. The fragment. Okay, this remove. And you can see some small hole here to fill those up usually i will just go smoothing okay right now the mask is like pretty tight with the brand contour maybe i need to here 
some smoothing, see if it goes well. So the purpose of Max here is just to get rid of some background to improve the reconstruction results. But as, as long as this mask is covering the brain region, even if it's just slightly larger, it's still okay. So right now we have good mask, image orientation good. Now we select GQI with default parameter. So for animal brand, I will always check B table. The reason is like, I would say most of the time the B table orientation may not be at the right orientation. It may be also flip it in some direction. This check B table would allow DSS Studio to say, okay, DSS Studio check all kinds of combination and make sure that the one we uh, come up with a good orientation that has a good fiber uh, continuity, coherence. So it's kind of automatic way to check the B table. So since everything is good, we just click run reconstruction. Okay, that's it. Uh, fifth file created. So let's check the fifth file. We're going to open fifth file as the T3, or either you will come back here. Let's double click. Let's restore all the settings first. So the first thing I will oh, I always do is just click on fiber tracking and see how it goes. Um. So from this whole brand tracks, it's nice, I would say, even though we, we had mentioned um, the distortion problem due to phase distortion, but it's, it's still okay. The overall quality I think is nice. And I will also check on the left side, see here, Cops callosum fiber, okay right orientation, you see the check B table uh, gave us the good configuration. Now I change it to the chrono style, as you can see here, Cox Callosan, so Cox Callosan, CST, or like the projection fiber, um, the, they are oriented at the right, good orientation. So if you see that like, this fiber is like, okay, flip, upside down or oh, it's not like forming this continuous contour then the b table has to to be fixed okay everything's good then let's try uh human automatic fiber tracking so you will notice here one key important thing here is a template dss studio assign is a marmoset. set um you the way this workout is like this, a studio will try to match brain size. But here, since we are going to try human automatic fiber tracking, we need to specify HCP 1065. This one is a human brain template. And then we'll see if like everything can normalize well. If not, then it's probably not going to work out. So it's the way I always did is okay, just kick at this function and you will see DSS Studio do the normalization. This will take a while. Okay, so I fast forward. Usually the, the normalization would take like one minute. Um, and once finished, you will bring up a at the dialogue, dialogue window. So to check if everything worked good, then you can select a brain sec. I will bring up white meter and gray meter. See if it goes good. So you can, you can see here, let me uncheck this, change a little bit on the presentation. It's actually, quite good, it's not bad, even though there's some time, some location may not be perfect, but in general, the normalization seems to work well by bringing monkey brain to human brain. So you see here the mid brain K 
catch all the contours. That's nice. And this white matter and gray matter mask cover only the uh, cerebral cortex without cerebellum. That's also good. So by bringing different atlas in, I can check whether everything goes well, like cinemas, putamen. Yeah, it's nicely capture most of the contours. So I, it seems like here, DSS Studio can normalize this brain to a human brain. So this is a good sign before we go further into automatic tracking, because if this step fail, it's unlikely we could get the correct automatic fiber tracking results. Great, so let's remove all those five, uh, regions. And on the right is create enable auto track. So here, once we create enable auto track, DSS Studio will run another normalization, but this time, instead of bringing um, subject space brain into template space, it's bringing template atlas back into the subject space. So it's kind of another way around. And this will take another like one or two minutes. Um, I will fast forward it. So right now the normalization is finished and we could now select different um, target to map. So for monkey brain, I would first go with optic radiation. The reason is compared with human brain uh, and other species, monkey brain always has a huge optic radiation. So if this failed, then probably, well, the other tracks will have no chance. So I select optic radiation and then all expand the tracking parameters. So those parameters are for human brain. Here we need to change a bit, especially like the minimum dense allowed um, monkey brain is much smaller. I will go for like 10 millimeter. Maximum lens doesn't really matter as long as it's big enough. And for automatic tracking, I would first get 5,000 tracks. So yes, a studio will keep seeding tracking until we get 5,000 tracks. Also, there are two additional parameters here. Topology info, informed pruning, I would stay the same. This step will prune noisy tracks and remove them. This should stay the same for regardless we are uh, using human brain or monkey brain. The last one we need to pay attention is auto track tolerance. So this parameter controls um, the difference allowed between the subject tracks and temperate tracks. So we cannot like say, okay, set out a very small value, you, then we won't get any results because the, the track won't perfectly match template tracks. And also on the other hand, we cannot say, okay, we have a very large tolerance value because it would just include a lot of um, noisy or false tracking. So it's need to like strike a balance between. And 16 millimeter is kind of is a parameter I figure out for human. Um, for monkey, I would go for maybe a half, like eight. But this one could also depend on the tracks we are going to map. But usually it's like a value compare uh, depending on whether it's human or monkey. Um, for human brain, there will be a fix, just a value should be good. For monkey, let's need to be smaller. So let's hit go fiber tracking. As you can see here, the DSS Studio kind of capturing the optic radiation nicely, even though there are some noisy tracks coming now. But later on, once this mapping finish and um, pruning will remove those noisy tracks. So it's pretty nice. I would say we always really got this working by just feeding monkey brain into human automatic fiber tracking pipeline. To make it faster, we, I can increase the 
thread count. So on my laptop, I, there are, we can at most get eight multi thread. And once I change this, I have to do the fiber tracking again. So I, at the same time, let's try other, other, other pathway. I say, Agri fasciculars on the left. See if it work out. It's nice. So human agri fasciculars, uh, no, no, it's like monkey agri fasciculars doesn't really have like a large C shape. It usually they go close, uh, similar to SLF. You see here the aqua fascicular already finished because we increased the shred count. Active radiation is still going. So once it reaches 5,000 track, then pruning will remove some noisy tracks. So for example, here aqua fascicular, some like some of the 200 track we removed because like the pruning figure out those are very noisy and remove them. Let's try another one. I say cortical spinal track. On the right side, let's see on the right side, see if it goes well. No, it's actually pretty good. So one key features in this auto track is DSS Studio doesn't need T1 or structure image. It's just based on purely based on the morphology or geometry of tracks. So even if we don't have T1 issue, get um, the track match with the others. It's pretty nice. Let's try I4. Some studies say that monkey I4 is not really able to be mapped. So let's try. Oh, it's actually pretty good. You see here is nicely capturing the eyefall for the amount of It's not bad though. Um, Ancinet. No, it's very fast. It's pretty good. So I would say, well, this working pretty well. Um, let me assign different color and see. No, I don't have structural image. Um, otherwise I can check in detail whether this terminate in the right location. So it's like, oh, another way of double tracking or top uh, or benchmark the auto track accuracy because I auto track doesn't use structural image so we can after this tracking those results we can use t1 or other structure image to validate or try to examine whether things goes well well that's it i think that's pretty good in terms of this data set even though there are still some um distortion signal quality problem but in the overall the the, the result is pretty good um, and we successfully use human auto tracking pipeline and apply it to monkey surprisingly well. Well, thank you for the video, watching this video. Um, if you have any question, feel free to email me.